Hey guys, it's Shaylin, and I'm here today with another episode of Recent Reads. This is the series where I just chat about the last 10 books that I read. Um, as always, these are my personal subjective opinions on what I read, and I'm not trying to say that if you feel differently, differently about any of these books, you are wrong. These are just my thoughts. I think in the last video I mentioned that I was kind of in a phase where everything that I was reading was just like a little mid, nothing was really that exciting, but I have a lot of books that I'm very excited to talk about in this video. I feel like this was a very exciting batch of books. I feel like every time I've been kind of in like a reading slump and everything is just kind of underwhelming. I just try to read as many gay books as possible and then they're always all good. Correlation or causation? Not sure, but it seems to work. The first book that I read was Brutes by Diz Tate. This was a most anticipated release of the year for me. Um, it seemed like everything that I'd like. Yet another book blurbed is, you know, for fans of Emma Klein and I'll never stop falling for that marketing trick. So this book follows the girls of a small town who are very obsessed with this slightly older girl in their town and they're kind of just like following her in this like very obsessive feral 13 year old girl kind of way and she ends up going missing. This had a lot of promise for me. I would have expected this to be a five star read and a favorite of the year. In many ways you could kind of call this like virgin suicides if it were from a group of girls perspective. It definitely had that hypnotic, weird, dizzy feeling, which I thought was really entrancing. And the use of collective POV for like this pack of 13 year old girls, I thought was brilliant. The writing is really perceptive to that age. And that was the standout quality to me was how incredibly it captured and in such tiny ways, the feralness and the weirdness of that age and that kind of collective mindset, I only amplified it. I think my issue with this was that it was a little hard to keep track of what was happening to the point that by the end, I felt like nothing had really happened. You know, one by one, we get glimpses into the futures of each of the girls lives when they're adults. And it felt like that was the primary narrative fuel was just switching back and forth through time. But in terms of what was actually happening in the fictive present, it kind of feels like nothing happens. Like it kind of feels like they just wander around and then the end is super weird. A case where I really liked the execution. I kind of just wish there was more of an actual narrative there because in the end, like I can't even really remember anything that happened in this book because it doesn't really feel like anything happens at all and that kind of made the really great execution lose impact. I enjoyed aspects of this, especially in the writing and the execution. The story itself was a bit lackluster to me. So then I read After Sappho by Selby Wynn Schwartz. This is a favorite of mine. I'm so excited to talk about this book. So this is basically just a collection of non-linear vignettes that follow a bunch of queer feminist figures throughout uh, late 1800s to early 1900s Europe. Kind of just a little mosaic of feminist and lesbian rights in this very specific period of time and place. And so it's kind of like fictional nonfiction, like it's clearly very well researched and a lot of the vignettes and characters are real, but a lot of it is also imagined. This was exquisite, I will say. If you are gay, you have to read this. The writing is so gorgeous and it's delivered in these punchy little vignettes. I love a vignette book and I thought this one was executed so well. The narrative is basically like this weaving, fragmented, unified braid and it feels very celebratory. It's a bit hard to explain because I can't say I've ever really read anything like this, but it was fantastic. You kind of have different levels to this book. You know, the individual vignettes all really pop and then they each make up kind of one strand of this braid and all the little threads individually are really beautiful. And then they all kind of fit together to create this kind of giant narrative, almost like Greek chorus like in terms of how it's presented. Very unique. I love this. When I say that my favorite genre of literature is gay vignettes, this is what I mean. So when I read some poetry, The World Keeps Ending and The World Goes On by Franny Choi, this was one of my most anticipated poetry releases of recent months because I love Franny Choi. She's definitely one of my favorite poets. There's a sense of mourning here, mourning your past because your ancestors were subjected to violence, your present because you're living among violence, mourning your future because you can't envision your future. I think this book really captures the feeling of smallness in the face of apocalypse. And I think it captures a feeling that many of us have. And it's amazing how she manages to write something that's so like mournful, kind of capture that almost mournful hollow quality, but she also does it with like tenderness. So now I get another book that I loved. I really was having a streak 
and it's Big Swiss by Jen Began. I'm so obsessed with this book. It has such a fun concept. So this book follows Greta. She is a transcriber for a sex therapist and she ends up becoming obsessed with one of the patients and she recognizes her voice one day when they have a chance encounter at a dog park. They begin an affair. It is a gay train wreck waiting to happen. It's one of those books where you can't really look away. It's a whole disaster. It's so weird and sad but in like a sardonic way and original. This was so engaging while also having so many layers and they're just constantly being peeled back. Like when you peel back a layer it just reveals more layers to the characters. Funny in like a sad way. Like you're laughing but it's like an oh no kind of funny. Quirky, witty, but also messed up and bizarre in almost like a Moshfegian way. Really weird, messy, interpersonal tension and emotional stakes. Some of the most strange, interesting relationships that I've read about in such a long time. It's a train wreck. You can't look away. When I say I want more books about disaster gays, this really epitomizes that. It was so chaotic and great. So then I read Hijab Butch Blues by Lamia H. This is a memoir and I don't read a lot of memoir. I would like to read a little more. You know, I can't say that memoir is like my favorite thing to read usually. And I think part of it is because I read from, sorry, this is not even one of the books, but I'm just going to a tangent about why I don't read memoirs. I feel weird critiquing memoir. I feel weird like having opinions on memoir because it's like, that's just your life. Like who am, I, who am I to critique? This book follows the author's journey. A immigrant from a South Asian country growing up in a rich Arab country and then eventually she moves to the US for university. She's also coming to terms with being non-binary and a lesbian. It's about how she comes out to herself and to her friends and how she finds queer community and a lot of it is about how she finds understanding of her gender and sexuality within her faith. This is a very thoughtful, engaging memoir. Like the narrative always feels like it is veering towards hope. Even if the point you begin at feels so far from hope. I think for me where this sometimes got a bit jumbled is that the chronology is a bit odd, kind of linear, but also kind of non-linear. It kind of just makes it feel like very important things get glossed over. And maybe that was due to the anonymous nature of the narrative, like maybe there were some really important things that had to be glossed over, but it just felt like there were some large gaps in the narrative, whereas other parts were maybe more detailed than needed or got circled like over and over. So I just thought the chronology was slightly maybe more complex than needed. However, overall, I did find this a very insightful memoir and the author has a wonderful ability to examine her own emotions. And so the style is a little more on the nose than I would enjoy in fiction, but as a piece of nonfiction, I could really appreciate the clarity with which the author was able to express her journey and learning process. She definitely expresses a very deep amount of vulnerability and intimacy in writing this book and you can feel it on the page. So then I read a collection of short stories, Bliss Montage by Ling Ma. This is a bizarre, strange, punchy little collection of short stories. Every story is quite punchy. She really leans into the surreal, the bizarre in a way that feels, it's weird, it's almost like plainly bizarre. It presents you these very bizarre situations and the narrative voice almost acts like it's normal. It creates this, this even more surreal quality. I really just enjoyed how she leans into the weird and goes with it, never really stops to explain. I think that the stories were weird and concise and there are a few stories in the book especially that really stood out to me and that I could see myself revisiting and um, reading again in the future. So then I read Couplets by Maggie Milner. This is a story of, well, it says a love story told in verse. Is it a love story? I wouldn't really go that far. I would say it's a story of queer awakening with a story of a someone's first queer relationship told in verse. I don't know if I'd go as far as to call it a love story. That seems like odd marketing, um, but it is told in verse. I struggle to really say what my feelings on this are. I simultaneously enjoyed it, but also was a bit underwhelmed in some regards. The line level to start is gorgeously specific and tactile and clever. In terms of like poetry, I thought that this succeeded greatly on a line level. There is, I will say, a level of pretentiousness to this book that for me kind of gets in the way of feeling like the people in this book are people and feeling like the experiences are something that I can just empathize with on like an emotional level. And that's coming from me. So if I think it's a little too pretentious, it's gotta be pretty high up there. Part of that is because there's so many references to other literary works. 
I don't know, it's like I've read some books that frequently reference other literary works, like thinking of um, You Were Eating an Orange, You Were Naked by Sean King, thinking of A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. But in this book, it didn't feel like that was really adding anything to the narrative. Instead, what it felt like, to me at least, was like the book didn't really trust itself to be deep enough on its own. And so it was just kind of looking for depth in all these references, but I don't know, to me that just created a bit of a level of pretension that was a bit hard to get past. The events themselves, the characters themselves, are fairly glossed over. Like, it's a book more of feelings, themes, and ideas, but you barely get the characters and events. I do really admire what this is doing. Graphic book told in verse, that sounds exactly up my alley. On a lot of levels, I admire what was going on here, but I also felt like I was missing something. And I think that what I was missing was kind of the actual story. The place that this book put the most attention and the place where it kind of decided to go the deepest. I felt that those things were a bit floaty and unsubstantial and that there were more concrete, but more in interesting things that could have been explored, but those were the things that were glossed over, like the actual narrative, you know? I don't know, I think the way that I could best describe this is it almost feels like reading a literary analysis of the story rather than the story itself. So I have complicated feelings on this. It is a one sitting kind of read and, you know, I think this is the type of book, comparing it to like After Sappho, you know, that this is the type of book that I would like to read more of and like to see more of. Experimental, poetic, sapphic literature, like that's my taste in books. That alone was enough to draw me to it. And there's so much that I can admire in the actual writing. Would have liked to get the story as well. <laughs> so then I read Scorched Grace by Margot Duahy. This is quite a fun, unique book. Also one of my most anticipated reads of the year. In fact, I think most of these books, that's why it's, they're all hardcovers. Pretty much everything in this video were books that were like most anticipated re releases of the year or recent months for me. This book follows Sister Holiday, who is a punk rock lesbian nun and amateur PI. And when Catholic school that she teaches at has a fire started, she begins investigating it because she's like, the cops are doing shit about this. I'm gonna take this into my own hands. We follow her investigating this series of arsons. Very sharp, weird, moody book. The atmosphere is pretty thick. The protagonist was so interesting. Such an interesting main character. I mean, just from the collections of traits we have, you, you kind of can know she's going to be an interesting character, but the way it plays out, she's quite interesting, quite fascinating psychology. I think for me, I found her personal story and this question of how she went from punk rock lesbian to Catholic nun, that was to me the more compelling mystery than the arson itself. I can't say that I found the mystery, the core mystery about the arson that compelling. That was not really what I found myself that invested in. And maybe that's just a matter of personal taste. Um, maybe I'm just not really like a mystery kind of person. Or I found this like psychological mystery of just wondering how she got from point A to point B was the most compelling. So that's what I enjoyed most was the slow reveal of her backstory. That's where I felt the most tension. I was much more interested in her as a person and this strange personal journey that she's gone on more so than like the mystery that she was investigating in the present, which I think for me that was a little lackluster. So then I read Venko by Sheree Demoline. This book follows Lucky, who lives with her grandmother. Pretty down on her luck. She ends up finding out that she is a member of this continent-wide witch coven and she only has seven days to find the last member of the coven in order to like unify the whole coven. This was quite a fun, readable, magical book. It's a little campy, fun cast, quirky world building. The setup is quite long. Like I will say this is like a, I don't know, almost 400 page book and the first half is basically set up. Just getting her to this coven and hearing the backstories of all the different members. And it's spread across, across a lot of POVs, different witches and the antagonist. The second half we actually set out on this more fast paced road trip where she has to find the last coven member. We don't really get a lot of depth into the magical practices um, or the rules. And I think more of that would have made the ultimate resolution a little more compelling. Magic is very much to ex explained as we go. Like she's a witch and as people do magic in order to solve problems, we'll get the explanation of what they're doing. But there isn't really a sense of magic as like a tool that could be used to solve problems because we don't really have any sense of the magic in this world. We just kind of know there are witches, they can do magic and they will do magic as the story goes on and we'll kind of figure out why and what that means. Not a huge issue, but I felt like, you know, she's just been discovered that she's a witch and the actual witch aspect is something that wasn't 
at least in the main character's perspective, wasn't too present. Felt like there was a lot of story left to tell. Felt like we ended really at the beginning. I, this feels like it should be a series. If this is a series, I'll absolutely read the future books. Currently, it's not marked as the beginning of a series on Goodreads, but I don't know. It feels like there's so much story left to tell and like we've truly only gotten the beginning. But it's a pretty fun, exciting, campy, witchy read. And I love fun, exciting, campy, which he reads. You have some really interesting characters, some of whom are given more depth than others because there's quite a lot to be set up in this book. It's such a readable, fun world, and I just feel like there's so much more left of this story. Hello there. So, <laughs> change of scenery. I'm in a different house. This is my cat. Tomorrow I leave to go camping, and I wanted to film this video before I left. We're just gonna do the last book vlog style. So the last book that I read was You Girl by Meredith Quartermain. This book follows a young woman named Frances who moves from a smaller town to Vancouver to go to university in the 1960s. I was unfortunately a little underwhelmed by this. We're introduced to a character who is simultaneously very naive and quite prejudiced but also very open-minded and very wise. And I felt like not enough was really done with that contrast and the potential within this character. As well, nothing was really done with the form. This book is kind of supposed to be centered around the fact that she's writing a book inspired by her life. And so she's kind of writing her truth into fiction. And I felt like that didn't really impact the form or even the events in really enough of a meaningful way. There were also just a few scenes that were quite off-putting and I didn't really know what I was supposed to take away from them. The main character spends a lot of this book basically being like, wow, lesbians are so weird, but maybe I'm a lesbian. And then I'm like, okay, queen, then do something about it. Cause that would be more interesting than watching you have an affair with your English prof, which was unfortunately a little underwhelming to me. I felt like there was a lot of potential in the writing and the characters, but I just didn't really feel any heat from the events. And so it felt a bit underwhelming to me. That's all for this episode of Recent Reads. I would love to hear about what you were reading in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye!